Good morning. We missed you guys that weren't with us this morning. We're out in John 17, so if you haven't read that, go ahead and read John 17. Here we see a prayer from God the Son to God the Father. Beautiful prayer. It's only recorded in John. And uh, Jesus starts out with the words, My hour has come. He says this initially in chapter 12. And then we see this being bookends of chapters 13 through 16 where Jesus is teaching his disciples about discipleship and what that will look like after he's gone. But uh, in verses 1 through 5, we'll start out there. Um, the hour has come. Glorify your son so that your son may glorify you. And then he explains in verse 3, he's saying, this is eternal life. And so that's pretty cool because we see the Savior telling us what eternal life is. And eternal life is that they may know you, the one true God, and the one who sent, who you have sent, Jesus Christ. So knowing God, and truly knowing God is knowing Jesus. And, and knowing him is beyond just uh, knowing him historically. It's to accept him, to receive him. To believe what he said is true, that he died on the cross for the forgiveness of your sin, my sin, but yet death couldn't hold him. He rose from the grave and he lives forever. And uh, then on in verse 5, Now, Father, glorify me in your presence with that glory I had with you before the world existed. Uh, glory here means uh, for Jesus to be glorified and to glorify the Father is to have the presence of God, to have... Uh, the weight, uh, the heaviness of God. And so Jesus incarnate, Jesus as, as flesh, uh, was the very presence of God. And we, we learn about that in Philippians. And so Jesus is wanting us to ha be glorified as well. Uh, so that we as believers have Jesus' presence, his heaviness, his weightiness, his very presence among us. So that other people can see Jesus in us and that we had before the world existed. So he's not only looking forward uh, to the cross and the crucifixion, but also the reunion with God the Father. Then verses 6 through 8, uh, I have revealed your name to the men you gave me before the world, from the, from the world. And the name means more than just the name of God or the name of Jesus or, or the Father, but it means the very essence, the very character, uh, the true identity of who God is is revealed in Jesus and Jesus has further revealed it to his disciples and that message that gospel message carries on today through us through believers at this time and uh, isn't it cool that uh, that in verse 6 there that you gave me from the world uh, we are a gift we're a gift from God the Father to God the Son so that that's a beautiful they have received them all these things uh, that Jesus was given from the Father He's talking to his disciples, but also to believers. They have received, verse 8, they have received them and have known for certain that I came from you. And, and that's where we go back to that uh, knowing, knowing the name. And they, they've received it, they've accepted it, and there's certainty there. Is there certainty with you? Is there certainty in your life? And then moving on to, to verse 20 uh, through 23. And we're included. We believers today are included in this. The disciples were listening on to an intimate prayer between God the Son and God the Father. He prayed for the disciples, but he also prayed for future believers, for me and for you. I pray not only for these, but also those who believe in me through their message. So the message has been carried on through generations and generations. And we've been blessed um, with the with the opportunity to hear that message but have we have you received it have you received it once again so that they may be one so he's calling on the disciples at the time to be one in in union but also the church together to be one what does that look like you know how are we doing how are you doing in being one with your brothers and sisters in Christ how are you being one as a as a church member um, and then the greater the greater church as a whole. What does that look like? Are there divisions in your life? Are there hang-ups that you have? There's certainly hang-ups, but are there hang-ups that are you are you are you part of the the problem or part of the solution? So, being one with Jesus first of all starts with salvation, but being one is an ongoing thing. You have to choose to be one to learn more about God and His Word. And then verses 24 through 26. Father, I desire you, those you have given me, to be with me 
where I am. So God is is requesting that we, or Jesus is requesting here, that we be go to heaven, that we get to go to heaven um, with Him and be with Him. But also down in verse 26, this is a, an evangelistic message as well, evangelistic calls to this prayer. I made your name known to them, and will make it known, so that. Uh, so that the love you have loved me with may be in them, and I will be in them. So, not only are um, did he, did he make it known to them, to the disciples, but I will make it known. Uh, so he continued to make it known beyond the disciples to us today. We're called to go out and share. We can't convict. We can't uh, coerce, manipulate, but we can certainly go out and share this great news that Christ died for you. We see this this whole picture of this prayer is is not only God's holy. He's holy. He's perfect. He is righteous but also and just. But also he's a loving God. He desires the best for you. He desires for you to be in heaven. So if you haven't today, I pray that you will receive Jesus into your life in a true and real way. You may know all the right answers. You may have all the Sunday school answers and all that, but have you truly received Him in your heart and your life? Are you living for Jesus or are you living for you? Deny self. Run to Christ. God bless you. Have a great week. See you soon.